They got this shit so twisted now. They got, uh, I know y'all noticed this shit. I see more white people pointing the finger at white people calling them racist. I'm seeing that shit more than black people calling them racist. Now, how the fuck did this shit happen? You talking about some upside down, backwards, twisted shit. They got everybody twisted. These different groups, everybody pointing the finger at each other. No, nobody trusts nobody. The blacks versus the blacks, the blacks versus the whites, the whites versus the blacks, the Mexicans, this, and then and, and the motherfucking LGB, that, and just is like, okay, what is with all these groups, these Antifas and the fucking KKK and the you got groups within groups of the FBI and the police. It's like, who you can't trust nobody. Nobody knows who the fuck is who. They got everybody so fucking fucked up and twisted. That's why this civil war is going to be the worst of all time. Paul Mooney. Welcome to Analyzing White America. It's a very difficult job, and I'm just the man for it. Let's welcome our first guest, Congressman Phillips. I, I tell you what's been bothering me most recently is it, it, I, I guess it's guilt. I don't know. It's like uh, blacks make me feel guilty. Sorry. Arabs make me feel guilty. Jews make me feel guilty. I, I don't know. I, I, I just feel like everything by being a white man, I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm the guilty party. This 911 thing, I mean, you know, you, 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 it sort of puts us all in the same pot, right? You know, uh, blacks, whites, it doesn't matter. But I, well, it's fear too. I got to tell you that my, my, my I'm scared to get on an airplane. I'm scared to fly anymore. We were supposed to have a conference in, in Las Vegas next week. I'm scared to death to go there. 9-11, it's a different world, ain't it? And shock, just stunned. And it took that to make white folks realize that we're human beings. Yeah, you understand? You know? Because they were so worried about us. They so, America is so worried about black folks. They were so worried about the land niggas, they forgot about the sand niggas. Now, a lot of you are clap, a lot of you are clapping, a lot of you house niggas are scared. Just, <laughs> you, you gonna get us in trouble. No emotion, no reaction. You black, you live in America, you in trouble. I can't get you in no trouble. So worried about us, huh? And then the rumors started. They said it was black folks. It was black folks. Black folks did that. I knew there wasn't no black people. Ain't no niggas did that. We don't commit suicide. No. If that had been black people flying that plane, you'd have saw, saw a whole bunch of parachutes. And do-rags. Nine eleven, and I want to thank, on behalf of Black America, because I'm a Black person, I want to thank White America. Thank you, thank you, White America, for making us tough. Because we'll get through this terrorist stuff. You made us, White folks made us tough, because they've been terrorizing us for 500 years. 
sicking dogs, putting water holes, lynching us. We used to terrorists. This ain't no big deal to us. I'm worried about white folks. I'm worried about my white friends. They ain't gonna make it through this. They're not used to this. I've, I've lost two or three white friends. They've cracked up. Take, they took them to the crazy house. They can't handle this. They asked me for my ID at least five times, dude. What the hell do they want from me? They can't handle this profiling. I'm opening up the school. How to be a nigga in America and survive. They're not gonna make it. Thank you, white folks, for making us tough. Because black folks will get through this. Just like we did slavery. You real niggas know what I'm talking about, just like we got you house niggas don't have a clue. But you real niggas know what I'm talking about. We will get through this. Just like we got through slavery. And I happen to know that that is a fact, and I have it on film. 
with one of the agents saying that they brought in cocaine, crack cocaine, and they brought in guns into this neighborhood. They want you to riot. They want you out into the streets. They want you in jail. They want to kill you, incarcerate you, or control you by the turn of the century. These transponders, these instruments, are used to track an individual from a satellite. There won't be anywhere you go. There won't be anything you can buy without these. This is Robert Wallingford, the Department of Defense. And the mark card attaches to the Battle Engagement Area Simulator Tracker. It goes to the beast. The mark and the beast. This is not figment of my imagination. And when I was uh, showing this little transponder, when I was rattling and lecturing about this in Hawaii, the Wiley Tea Room, fell out in the audience and said, you're wrong. And I continued, and then I said, no, this is coming. He says, you're wrong. And about the third time, I said, if you know so much, why don't you come up here? And he did. And I was wrong. He said, it's not coming, it's here. And he had dug one out of the shoulder of a friend. This white boy actually had a table full of gadgets, implants, ID bracelets, and all types of stuff to say, and he said that they're getting ready to lock black people down. And this was the problem. Collett was baiting, debating this white boy. And this is probably one of the greatest tragedies ever. This has got to be the all-time low for Khalid Muhammad. First of all, when a white boy come up in a damn church, I don't give a damn if that motherfucker milk white, if he white as this damn paper. I don't give a damn if he sound like a motherfucking cracker from Mississippi. If he's telling the people in the church about how white people are getting ready to kill black people, he needs the respect. Not because he's white, because our people are so confused. Now understand the science on this shit. So as a result, because of that, Khalid comes up debating this man. And for the first time, you know, Khalid comes up, he have a pile of doggone documentary. And he debate these crackers. Khalid had one little sheet of paper. And when he got up, he just did a medley of his, recent, of his, of his jokes and his high things when he talked shit about white people. You know, kill the babies in South Africa, he did that one. Then he got on the emotions of the black people and they started cheering him on because he's college. Brothers and sisters, I will waste no time. I will prove to you here tonight, beyond any reasonable shadow of doubt, with moral certainty, <laughs> that Anthony Hilda is indeed the devil and the member of a wicked race of people whose history is absolutely written in blood. The nerve of a friend to come into the black community. Some ugly, wrinkled, pickled cracker to come in and have the nerve to stand in your face. And some of you sit in the hall. Now, meanwhile, this man's message is going out the door. Now, I'm looking at this shit now. The white man just dropped on him. 
Now we know that the white man ain't no angel. The white man part of the goddamn Illuminati too. And the whole shit is a damn show going on. And the whole shit is a damn show going on. It's a government cointel show going on with Collett being involved. It was embarrassing to see Colin up there, the track of this, and he, he, he wasn't going to no scholarship, talk about the man wife, <laughs> and how this man is an old redneck devil, and how he want to, this man looking at me with my fine bald head, and he want to fuck me too, and the man, I'm looking at this shit, I'm saying, this is amazing. Okay, and this what happened. So he talked shit about the man, the man, you know, the man did his 45 minutes, Colin gets up and just talked this shit, and his... Just going back through all his other tapes on stuff he said about white people. You know, in the funny thing, and got the people, all the people going crazy over college. And the white boy stands up. He said, this man is a government agent. Call it Muhammad is a government agent. And the people got mad. He said, I can prove it. And the motherfucker had all his papers in his scholarship. He said, this man here worked for the Ford Foundation. And the people was all mad, what are you? And he said, wait a minute, ask him. Carter said, yes. Mm -hmm. He'll be like he writing some little paper. He said, this man worked for, went to Yale, Harvard, and he worked for Columbia University. And all right, so this man is a government agent. He said, if they got this man up in here to incite riots so they can lock you down. But he never, but the whole key was, now this is a man that's supposed to be debating. The cracker is calling him out saying that he was a doggone government agent that was sent to the black community to incite riots so they can lock you down. And this, and Collett sat right up there and let that cracker talk about him and didn't try to explain or try to get out of it. He didn't give no explanation or hardly nothing. I mean, it was amazing. I mean, here's a cracker saying you're a government agent and you don't say nothing. I say them motherfuckers is working together. I say them motherfuckers is working together. it is that y you can say the n-word you know what I'm saying I, I can't say the n-word what 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 is that about what do you mean you can't say the n-word you know I'm not I can't, I can't say the n-word it's politically incorrect is what you're saying it's just wrong isn't it well why yeah. who do you think is the first person to ever say the n-word well that's just it it was it was disrespectful I don't I don't I don't want to show disrespect for uh, for anybody I and mean, that, that would that be was, political suicide yeah but don't you think it was a long time ago well the n-word is still saying it right we're saying we're just using words we're, now we're saying the n-word what's the difference well you can't say anything anymore I mean it's I, I, I learned just last week you can't talk about orientals unless you're talking about rugs I mean, you can call me a wasp. That doesn't bother me. You can call me a cracker. Yeah, I mean, I could call you. I could call you cracker. That that would make me feel good. Huh? Well, why don't, why don't we say cracker together? Why don't we say cracker together? All right. Cracker. cracker. Now, does that bother you? No. See? Yeah. Why don't we say honky together? Honky. Uh -huh. Honky. Peckerwood. Peckerwood. Yeah. White mm -hmm. trash. Let's say that together. White trash. Yeah, see? White Don't you feel better? 
Hmm. Huh? Hmm. Instead of the N word, let's let's say nigger together. Hmm. Say it. Go ahead. Don't stutter. Say nigger. Nigger. See? Don't you feel better? I'm not supposed to feel better. Go ahead. Right just say just say nigger. Nigger. See? That's nobody. Anything happen? That doesn't, that doesn't hurt your feelings. Oh no, doesn't bother me at all. Most people. That that that, that, hurt, that hurts most people's no, feelings. No, if it doesn't apply, let it fly. <laughs> it's like Johnny Cochran here. If it don't, apply, it's some black and some white folks tripping on me now. You trip, they trip, they trip on me. <laughs> Make that nigger. <laughs> Stop saying nigger. I'm getting a nigger headache. I can't think. Nigger, stop it, nigger, stop. My wife, oh, she shouldn't have made up nigger. I didn't make it up. It's too bad. I say nigger a hundred times every morning. It makes my teeth white. Nigger, 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 nigger. I ain't scared of that word. And they have me on all the white folks in the nigger shows. I'm the nigger expert. They ask me all kind of stuff about nigger. They had me on CNN, the white lady. You, you, you might have saw it. They had me on CNN because J-Lo said nigger. They had me on there. And the white lady was running around there, blonde hair, blue eyes. And she was crazy as she could be. And she says, oh, now, Paul, <laughs> you really don't mind when someone white, and she ain't stuttered yet, says nigger. I'm just smiling, being funny. No, ma'am. And myself, I'm saying to myself, I'm going to kill this bitch. I'm, 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 I'm. <laughs> I'm acting too. I'm going, hmm. <laughs> but she came right back to me. Now, Paul, you don't mind when someone white says nigga. I'm telling myself, I'm going to take my shoe off. I'm shoe beating this bitch. <laughs> we'll get this bitch in the alley. I'm going to cut this bitch's head off. I'm saying to myself, <laughs> no. <laughs> and I'm praying to God. I said, God, help me. Help me say something. <laughs> To this white woman to shut her up, please. And she came back about the third time. Now, Paul, you really don't mind when someone says nigger. You know how white folks are getting on your nerves. I mean, no. <laughs> Why, Paul? I looked her right in the face. I said, because I like a little salt on my cracker. She dropped Mike everything. 